Hey guys, this is Dmitri with Hardware Canucks, and today we're taking a look at the LG G Pad. Now, since the latest Nexus 7, the tablet scene has been quite slow because this very strong hold the competition has when it comes to 7 and 8 inch devices. So, this injection from LG into an overwhelmingly saturated sphere is surprising yet welcome. The G Pad features all the expected goodies, so I think it'll really come down to user experience that might win people over. Now, starting with the price, this 8 inch tablet is a bit on the high end at $350 for 16 gigabyte capacity. With the latest Nexus 7 rocking the same resolution and a smaller form factor, the G-Pad may not be on priority list if you are on the market for one. Now, Speaking of the specs, the 8.3 inch display is an IPS panel with 1920 by 1200 resolution, really crisp display. Running it is Snapdragon 600 quad core at 1.7 GHz with 2 gigs of RAM and not yet upgraded to KitKat, so this is running an older Android 4.2.2. Some of the very distinct physical features is the brushed aluminum plate at the back uh, that after first 15 seconds of use looks well used. The white version of the tablet is much better at concealing all the fingerprints. I personally love the form factor though, a very thin device at 8.3 millimeters <laughs> and weights only at 338 grams and holding this with one hand is perfectly comfortable. The speaker grills are located at the back for audio consumption in landscape mode only. I really wish the speakers would be somehow incorporated into the front for non-restrictive media consumption. Alright, when it comes to audio quality and speaker location, when you are holding this in landscape mode, you are able to sort of direction the audio with your hands, sort of uh, channeling the audio towards you more, uh, instead of the audio just being blasted uh, to the back there. Now let's listen to a sample clip to see how loud this tablet can get. So as you can hear, it is quite loud. The bass is obviously lacking, but for regular entertainment purposes and watching things on the tablet, it is totally acceptable. Connectivity wise, we get a micro USB for charging and data at the bottom, along with a microphone, headphone jack at the top, along with a micro SD card slot for expandable storage and an IR blaster. The power button and volume rocker are on the regular spot on the right and have a really tactile and solid feedback. Although don't be expecting to use the power button much to wake up the G-Pad as double tap wake up feature is really awesome for that convenient and quick entry. And the same goes for turning off the screen by double tapping on an empty area of the screen. We have a front facing 1.3 megapixel camera and the rear cam as well which is 5 megapixels. Now pictures aren't spectacular, colors are a little bit washed out and quite poor low light performance but I would recommend this HDR mode as that helps to get rid of the noise and restore some of the dynamic range. Now I do like the screen on the G-Pad, the viewing angles especially, colors aren't as vibrant and people have been complaining about the brightness but I didn't find that as an issue. Now what bothered me was the ever so slightly laggy performance. For example switching between portrait and landscape mode is probably the most visible lag. Uh, it's quite slow as the G-Pad was loading all the screen icons as you can see and I think we've gotten so used to smooth and buttery performance that this small lag is very obvious. Now holding the home button will reveal all running apps that you can exit with a swipe. Of course widget and icon customization on the screen is possible and given the real estate of the screen, pull down settings have been combined with all the notifications where you can also quickly access brightness and volume bar which is always convenient and all those settings at the top like uh, Q Memo. And I think where it lacks in fluidity of operation, it makes up in a list of really useful Q apps. Let's take Q Memo as an example. It's an overlay app that stays on your screen, so you can write short memos and share the screen capture. Uh, this would be useful for Google Map directions, for example. We also have a list of Q Slide apps that allows multi-window support opening internet on one and uh, calculator on another for example so you can move the windows around still you can resize them and you can also change the opacity of each window now the problem here is that these windows are always on the top even if you're switching between pages so you're always looking at the same 
queue slide apps unless you close them. Also another cool feature is this three finger swipe to the left that hides the pages and swiping to the right to reveal them. Just another way to interact with your G-pad, although you can see this lag really shows here and is very evident. Now one of my favorite features is Q-Pair that allows you to connect your G-pad to a smartphone just install the app on your phone and the two devices will be synced up. Now this allows you to receive calls and text notifications that allows you to actually answer text messages as well uh, while you're on your tablet without needing to reach to your phone. Now one thing to consider though is the constant Bluetooth connection that will impact your battery life. By pinching the screen we zoom out uh, to all of our pages so we can swap them around plus holding an empty area on the screen we can customize all of our icons and widgets. Now when it came to gaming performance I didn't notice any lag so the hardware can definitely handle demanding games and the G-Pad scored really high in the generic and joint benchmark which is a bit surprising because within the custom UI it feels so much slower than it actually is and we all know that pure Android is the better way to go. The G-Pad houses an impressively large 46 mAh battery to keep that 1200p screen running. Uh, now with casual use it wasn't necessary to charge for a couple of days but with heavy use and Wi-Fi on I got about to 7 to 8 hours. Now throughout my experience with the G-Pad I really enjoyed the form factor. The screen size is just perfect for mobile media consumption and the weight and the thickness of the G-Pad is totally my style. Display PPI is quite crisp, uh, SD card slot is totally useful for extra storage and speaker location for landscape mode is unobtrusive. I also like a few of Q apps like Q pair and multi window app option with the Q slide and lastly the battery life was uh, satisfactory. Now on the flip side the custom UI on top of Android is not the buttery smooth standard of Android 4.2 which is a shame as the hardware can totally handle that and the price is quite high considering what's out there on the market. I do however think that the LG pad has a place in the tablet scene as it delivers to the standard, I just wish it was running pure Android. Now what do you guys think of this tablet? Would you consider paying $100 extra for an inch or go with the trusty second gen Nexus 7? Leave your comments down below, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.